On the 17th of August 2017, Privilege Romo, a 24-year-old, fled her matrimonial home in Inyati because she feared for her life. She had been married to Dingilizwe Dure, a 39-year-old who was 16 years her senior. Dingilizwe was a polygamist with two wives and five children. This was not the first time that she was fleeing her matrimonial home because of his violent behavior. This time, however, she decided not to go to her parents' home, but she fled to her uncle's home in Fort Nixon, which was probably a decision she made knowing that he would come and try to force her back home with him. Dingilizwe came from Gaela village under Chief Madliwa in Gai district but lived in Inyati. He discovered that his wife was missing that very day and he decided to follow her at her parents' home. His intentions were obviously sinister because on his way he passed through Bulawayo, bought two five-liter empty cans which he intended to put petrol so that he would burn her parents' homestead. He then hired for over four hours and arrived at the township when it was already dusk. When he got to Gueluchela, the township that was close to her parents' homestead, he then filled those five liter gallons with petrol and bought matches and a matchet. He then carried the 10 liters of petrol, a matchet, matches, a miner's torch for over five kilometers to her parents' homestead. I'm not quite sure what exact time he got to the homestead, but he went directly for the kettle pen where he used his matchet to slash to death 11 beasts. He was so blinded by raised that even after killing 11 cattle, he did not change his mind about burning the homestead. Unfortunately, the bedroom that he targeted was where her four younger siblings were already sleeping. The four siblings were Progress Lomo, a 19-year-old, Preference Lomo, a 15-year-old, Presence Lomo, a 13-year-old, and Peculiar Lomo, a 4-year-old. When he got to the bedroom, he knocked down the door, poured petrol on the door, on the windows, and set it alight. The four children were walking up by the heat of the flame. Unfortunately, it was too late. They screamed as they burned to death. It is unclear if Dingilizwe knew that there were people that were burning in the hut, but as soon as he set the hut on fire, he fled the scene. His woolen hat was found on the crime scene and there was no doubt that it had been him in retaliation. Privilege was alerted about what her husband had done to her four younger siblings. He assumed that she had been at her father's house, but she had actually been at her uncle's house. He was then arrested and charged with murder and denied bail. It was pretty obvious that he had intended to commit arson because he brought two 5-liter gallons with him all the way from Vlawayam. It was obvious that he was not trying to solve this issue amicably. He came with sinister intentions. It was, however, complicated to prove that he intended to kill her siblings because there was no evidence to suggest that he knew that there were people sleeping in the hut. If all he wanted to do was burn down the hut, he could have at least checked to see if there was anyone in the hut before choosing to burn it down. He knew that there were people who lived on the compound but he never tried to establish where they were before setting the hut on fire. Because of his reckless behavior, he had taken four innocent lives and the court could not take this lightly. When he was questioned by the police, he attempted to place blame on his father-in-law. He claimed that his wife only left him because his father-in-law kept extorting him from money and was demanding more money for Lobola. He denied ever being a violent man and claimed that his wife only left him because they wanted to extort more money from him and he had spent a lot of money on the family. He also attempted to use intoxication as an excuse, claiming that on that particular day he had been drunk and it had caused him to act out of character. His ex-wife, Keresenzia Manechi, disputed this claim. She claimed that he was a very violent man that would beat up both his wives constantly. She claimed that privilege had indeed fled abuse from him and that's why she had gone to her uncle's house, not to her father's house because she thought that he would follow her up and beat her at her parents house. It was also established in court that there was no evidence that he was being extorted by his father-in-law, that he had simply acted in violence because his wife had left him and he was retaliating. The judge said that this was a reflection of his violent behavior and he found him guilty of murder with constructive intent and sentenced him to life in prison. He only escaped the death sentence by a whisker because there was no evidence of premeditation of murder. Constructive intent is murder by negligence. It means that his act could have been unintentional, but he did not take proper steps to make sure that people were safe. Justice J. Moyo also said that society had reacted to this murder with shock and grief, and the courts had no option but to show extreme disapproval of such barbaric behavior. He said that even after seeing that he had violently abused his wife, instead of repenting, he 
further inflicted violence on her younger siblings, which was unacceptable. This court case is a sober reminder that using violence to solve conflicts can lead to lifelong consequences. He is rotting in jail because he just failed to control his temper and solve problems like a mature adult. May the four siblings' souls rest in eternal peace.